Hey there. Welcome to episode 95 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is my newest Ninja Turtle figures. Now, I've been collecting Ninja Turtle figures since the beginning. Uh, this here is my original Leonardo action figure from Playmates. This came out in wave one of the very first Ninja Turtle action figure line. And I still think this figure holds up today. Like, it's a nice looking figure. He's still in good shape. So yeah, I've really been a fan of Ninja Turtle figures since the beginning. Now, when it comes to Ninja Turtle figures, I'm mostly a fan of kind of just the core characters, which is a little different than a lot of the other toy lines I collect. Because when it comes to Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, those lines were all things that I started collecting when I was, like, before I can even really remember. Like, I was, like, four years old, five years old when I started collecting all those lines. So they really uh, had a big impact on me, um, and I love those lines, even the kind of obscure characters. Um, but when it came to Ninja Turtles, they came around a little bit later. It was kind of the, the later half of the 80s. I was a little bit older. So I was excited about them when they came out. I remember the uh, the Ninja Turtle van was, like, the first toy I bought with my own money um you know like maybe before that I'd got some money for my birthday and I might have bought something but I had a paper route at this point in time and I earned enough money to buy the turtle van which I think was like 30 or 40 bucks which was a lot of money at the time um but yeah I was really stoked to get that turtle van but uh, I didn't collect turtle figures that deep into the line like I got the first wave or two so the, f the first uh, you know the four turtles shredder krang bebop rocksteady Casey Jones, April, Splinter, um, and then a couple after that, Mondo Gecko, Usagi Yojimbo. Uh, I don't know, but it, it fizzled out pretty quick. By the by, say the second or third wave of figures, I was already kind of losing interest. I had probably just aged out of it a little bit. Turtles came along just unfortunately a little too late in my, into my childhood for me to be like a diehard turtle fan. But I do still love the original like base the core characters of Ninja Turtles. So not only have I held on to some of my vintage figures here, but uh, I collected some of the figures when they rebooted it. Like here's a really nice Leonardo from the, uh, I think 2002 or sorry, 2012 line of Ninja Turtles. So this was also from Playmates. Uh, I really like the look of these guys. They were a little more stylized. I like the wrappings on their feet and on their hands and stuff. Really great line of figures. So I have quite a few of these. And uh, then most recently, uh, NECA has started making some really cool Ninja Turtle figures. So not only are they doing the uh, animated line, so these are figures based on the, the 80s cartoon, and they look great. Really nice looking figures. Um, but then they also have started doing figures based on the live action movies of the 90s. So here is a live action Leonardo. Looks really nice. I love the detail in this thing. So yeah, great, great figures from NECA. Very pleased. Uh, if you're a Ninja Turtle fan, I would say 2019, 2020, this has been the best time to be a Ninja Turtle fan because there's great figures coming out. Um, so yeah, for this video here, I want to show you some of the new NECA figures I've got. Um, I guess this would be considered Wave 2. Uh, wave 1 consisted of the four turtles, and they came in two packs, packaged with two different foot soldiers, uh, Shredder and Krang. So I've had that set for a while. Um, not too long ago, maybe two months ago, I got the two pack with Bebop and Rocksteady. And I guess that would be considered part of Wave 2 as well. But I got that one before I got all the other packs, and I showed you that one already. So uh, if you're interested in seeing the Bebop and Rocksteady, I recommend you go check out my, my previous video. Um, but in this one here, I'm going to take a look at the rest of of NECA's Wave 2 uh, Ninja Turtle figures based on the animated series. So we've got April and Casey. Both of them are packaged with foot soldiers. And then I've got kind of an Evil Mutants 2-pack, similar to Bebop and Rocksteady. But I've got Slash the Evil Turtle and uh, Leatherhead the Alligator. So I got these Ninja Turtle figures um, it's probably been almost three weeks now since I first got these figures. And uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I've got so much new stuff coming in 
that I'm way behind in taking these videos. Like right beside me here, I've got a whole box full of Spider-Man figures in their packaging. And I really want to open these things up, but I can't open them, I feel, until I show you on video here what they look like in their packaging and stuff. So I end up just sitting on things for way too long. Anyway, so with these Ninja Turtle figures, I'll confess, I've already got them open, like here they are. Um, but I did shoot some video just to show you what they look like inside the box. So let's take a look back at that video and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the figures outside of the packaging. So here we have April O'Neil and a foot soldier inside the packaging. Now this foot soldier is specifically called a bashed foot soldier and that's because he has battle damage. You can see some of his electronics protruding through a wound in his chest. Um, you can see this, this set here is loaded up with accessories. There's throwing stars and guns, a little creature down there, uh, a camera for April, a recording device. So all kinds of fun accessories in here. And the artwork on the front is very reminiscent of the 80s cartoon. On this side of the box, we have a nice picture of the April figure. And on this side, we have a picture of the foot soldier. On the back, you've got a picture of the two figures together as well as kind of a generic bio of the Ninja Turtles and then a cross promotion with the other two packs in this wave. Here we have Casey Jones and another foot soldier inside of the packaging. You'll notice that this foot soldier is called Slashed. So he also has battle damage, but his is much more severe as his whole midsection has been kind of slashed. We'll take a better look at that once we open these guys up. But you can see they have all kinds of accessories here. Casey Jones has all of his sporting paraphernalia, such as his hockey stick, baseball bat, cricket bat, etc. The foot soldier appears to have the similar weapons as what we've seen with foot soldiers in the past. Throwing stars, the different size uh, guns, and a communicator. We'll take a look at all that stuff in a minute. This box here also has some really nice 80s style artwork for these characters. Here's a shot of the Casey figure on this side and a shot of the foot soldier on this side. On the back, it's pretty much the same thing as with April. So you see Casey and the foot soldier displayed together. It's the same generic bio that was on the other box as well as the same figures available in the cross promotion. And this is Slash and Leatherhead inside the packaging. So just like with all the other sets, you see these guys come fully loaded with a lot of accessories. This box is actually a little bit thicker and bigger than the other two sets, I think to accommodate for Leatherhead being such a large character. Um, there's lots of accessories in there uh, for both characters, including extra hands and lots of guns and swords. So we'll take a look at all that stuff in a moment. There's some nice cartoon inspired artwork on the front. There's a picture of the Slash figure on this side of the box. A picture of Leatherhead on this side of the box. And on the back, we have the two figures posed together along with the generic bio and the cross promotion. Okay, so now you've seen all of the Wave 2 figures inside of their boxes. So now we can actually take a look at them outside. But before we do that, I've got one other thing that I wanna show you inside of the box. And this figure here is what, it made me change the title of this video. Originally I was gonna say reviewing you know NECA's Wave 2 Ninja Turtles but I'm going to throw an extra toy into this video that's not a NECA figure um, and this so this is a Super 7 figure that I'm going to show you now while NECA is really killing it with making their Ninja Turtle figures they are making figures based on the, the cartoon and also the live action movie and they actually have a third thing covered too is they've got the uh, the old video games covered so this isn't the best example because it's a little hard to see it on Slash, but this is a Slash figure, not based on the cartoon, even though I think he like he fits in really well with those cartoon figures, and you could definitely integrate them together into a display or play with them together if you wanted to. But this is actually based off of the Turtles in Time video game, and you can tell that um, partly because of the way he's painted, all these like uh, kind of square patterns. You can see that this this is supposed to represent the like kind of eight bit digitization of a video game character uh, you can see it a little bit on his legs here so so they're doing the uh, the cartoons the movies and the video games they've really got their bases covered however 
there was one kind of one small gap in the licensing, and that is the vintage toys. So if you wanted a figure, a modern figure that looked just like the Leonardo you had as a kid, you can't really get that. Like these, I would say, are superior, but you know the fact that he's got the pupils in his eyes and you know he looks maybe a little friendlier. Um, you know, he doesn't have the black straps across his chest. Like, maybe this is the design you really liked, even if it wasn't cartoon accurate. Um, but now you couldn't get a modern figure of this from NECA. But now you can from Super 7. So, Super 7 is making all of these, uh, Ninja Turtle, I forget what they call them, like, retro figures. Um, I think they're actually called the, uh, Ultimate, Ninja Turtle Ultimate line. So, based off of these vintage toys. So they have, they're just now delivering wave one of their uh, ultimate figures. And they've already got pre-orders up for wave two and wave three. Now, I was reluctant to buy into these things. Um, for one, they're very expensive. Um, like, with these NECA figures, if you find them on shelves, they're about 30 bucks a pop. And for a figure this size in Canada, that's pretty normal. That's how much Marvel Legends costs. That's how much... Uh, Star Wars Black Series costs. So a six inch figure, 30 bucks, that's pretty reasonable. Now, Super 7's figures are about double that. It costs you about 60 bucks a figure. And, uh, you know, sure they have a lot of accessories, but so do these guys. So I find it kind of hard to justify the, the price for Super 7. However, Super 7 has made a ton of awesome figures in the past that I was really curious to see what they were gonna do. So, Wave one of their figures consisted of uh, Raphael, uh, Splinter, a foot soldier, and Baxter Stockman. So I never really liked the way the vintage Splinter toy looked. He had this kind of big fat round nose. So I didn't really feel like he would be the best choice for me to get a new figure based on that old one. The foot soldier, he looks nice, but NECA is also already kind of forcing me to army build NECA figure or uh, foot soldier figures because they keep releasing their figures in two packs. And I now have four foot soldiers from NECA in order to get all the other characters. So I wasn't thrilled to buy another foot soldier from Super 7. Uh, and Raphael, you know, I don't really, he's not one of my favorite turtles. I like all the turtles, but Leonardo has always been my favorite. And so if I was going to buy one turtle from from Super 7, just to kind of see if I like this line, see if it's worth collecting. You know, I can't just drop 60 bucks on something and realize, eh, I, I don't really like these. So I would have rather done that on Leonardo. And Leonardo is coming out in Wave 2, and I do have that on pre-order. So for Wave 1, if there was one figure I was going to get, it would have been Baxter Stockman, who is the scientist who turns into a fly. Um, because I love the idea of Baxter Stockman, this kind of mad scientist that transforms himself into a bug man. But I'll be honest, I didn't necessarily like the way he looked in the uh, the cartoon. So I assume NECA probably will make a Baxter Stockman in this line. But I don't know if he's going to quite capture the look I want. I preferred the classic toy. However, one thing that always bothered me about the vintage toy is I hated that Baxter had human hands and then all these like fly feet and all these fly appendages and stuff. I just thought it looked gross uh, and not in a good way. Like I don't mind gross sometimes like Muck Man or Mutagen Man. Some of these other turtle characters are kind of gross, but they're kind of cool. But I don't know, just the thought of these like human arms growing out of this fly. I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. So I passed on that Baxter Stockman as well. But then as part of their like San Diego Comic-Con convention, which uh, didn't really happen this year. They didn't have any Comic-Cons this summer. But if they had had a Comic-Con, Super 7 would have had this toy as an exclusive at the convention. Since the convention was canceled, it was just kind of an online digital convention. The convention exclusives were available to everyone to pre-order from their website. And so one of them was a repaint of their Wave 1 Baxter Stockman. So that's what I have here. And I've been really excited to open this, but I've been sitting on it for probably two weeks now. I've had this, and I haven't been able to open it because I haven't had time to shoot a video. So I'm really excited to show you guys so then I can finally open the damn thing. So here's the box, and it's really nice. It's similar to what we've seen 
Uh, for me, I ordered their Conan Ultimate figure not too long ago. It was a similar thing. It had this whole slip sleeve that slid off the top here. So you see you got a picture of Baxter Stockman in like a manhole. And then you've got the Ninja Turtles logo on the back. Not much else on the sleeve. Um, nothing really on the top. Well, I guess you got the Ninja Turtles. Or you see the Ultimates logo in there. It's pretty subtle. But anyway, so what's cool about this packaging, and you probably can't really tell from here, is this has got a bit of a texture to it. And all this like kind of light blue on here and on here, it's glow in the dark. Because that's what makes this figure kind of special, is where the standard version was, came in the classic colors, which was a true remake of the vintage 80s Baxter Stockman toy. This one here, they changed it up, and they've made him a glow in the dark. So we'll slide this off there, and here you see Baxter Stockman. So, I don't know if you can really tell, you'll get a better look at him once I open him up. But uh, he's cast in this kind of translucent -y blue material. So he will glow in the dark. And his, everything about him is a little different. Like his hair is blue instead of the standard orange that we usually see with Baxter Stockman. Um, I'll do a little side by side here next to the, uh, the standard figure that Super 7 is putting in. And you'll, you'll be able to see the differences. Um, but yeah, I was, for one, I was pleasantly surprised when I got this toy to see how big it was. Like this has got some bulk to it. Like it feels kind of heavy. The box is pretty big. Um, like you can see, just compared to one of NECA's figures here, like this Baxter Stockman is, this is a big figure. Um, so this too has glow in the dark um, on the packaging. On the back here, you've got a little bio for Baxter. I know it's kind of tough to see because of the glare. But uh, yeah, this is really cool. And what really sold me on this figure and again, it might be a little hard for you to tell, but you see his arms here, his hands, they're cast in the translucent blue, which matches the same translucent blue as his fly legs and on his fly arms. So in the standard figure, these fly legs and fly arms are purple, but then his main hands are that fleshy human color, and that's what I didn't like. So here, you can't really tell. He looks a lot more consistent, like his whole body is made out of the same glowy blue substance. And yeah, I think this looks much better. So I'm really excited to pop this guy open. And if he's as good as I think he's going to be, it will definitely influence uh, whether I buy more of these Super 7 Turtle figures. And chances are I think that I might. So there you go. You've seen him inside the packaging. Now I can finally open him up. And then we'll talk about all of these new Ninja Turtle figures. Okay, so you've seen everything inside of the packaging. So now let's take a look at them loose. So first up, let's take a look at April O'Neil. So this is a figure I've been anticipating quite a bit. Uh, she was a character that I really loved in the original cartoon. And I didn't own the original toy because I just didn't think it did her justice. Even as a kid, I just didn't like that April toy. Um, her proportions seemed a little weird when compared to the turtles. I just didn't like it. And then they've made April figures uh, in more recent years to coincide with some of the other Ninja Turtle lines, like the, the 2012 line, for example. But... Uh, April looks pretty different now. Uh, you know, she's a teenager in some of the other versions of Ninja Turtles. And, uh, you know, regardless of which one you like best, I think this is classic April to me. Maybe this doesn't match the uh, original Mirage comic books. I don't even know. But this is what matches the cartoon. This is how I was introduced to April when she's wearing this full yellow jumpsuit. I don't know why. It's kind of a ridiculous outfit choice, actually. But uh, this is the April that I know and love, and so I'm glad to finally get this in action figure form. Now, she comes with a bunch of accessories. Um, some of them, I'll be honest, because I'm not a hardcore turtle guy, and I, I haven't watched the cartoon since I was a kid, and I don't remember the specific episodes. So she's got some uh, accessories, like this little alien guy came in her package. Uh, she's got some alternate hands. But the main thing that uh, I've chosen to display her with here is she's got a video camera and a microphone that attaches to a tape recorder, which are pretty old school looking uh, in this day and age. But considering that this is based in the 80s, yeah, it seems appropriate for the time. I like how both the video camera and the microphone have the Channel 6 logo, as that's the, uh, the news station that she worked for. So uh, yeah, this is a nice figure. It's nice to get a classic April um, the way she appeared in the cartoon. But 
it's uh, it's not perfect. Uh, for one, I still think the proportions are a little weird. Her head seems too big for her body. It's not it's not terrible, but it's it's noticeable that she seems a little a little out of whack. Uh, her articulation. So it's good. Like you see, she's got um, double jointed knees here. Um, but as I've talked about with any of these NECA figures, they feel a little delicate. So if the joint doesn't immediately move, I really don't want to force it because I'm scared I'm going to break things. Uh, another good example of that is her arms. She doesn't exactly have a double jointed elbow, but what she does have is like two different elbow joints, one right in the sleeve and then one just below it on the bare skin. So I suppose you could get a really good bend of the arm if you bent both joints, but uh, her arms are so skinny, I'm really scared I'm gonna break her arms when I, f when I force these things. So it's kind of weird articulation. Um, the other thing I have, like the face, the way it's painted, it's it's a pretty face, but I still don't think it's it quite captures her look from the cartoon. I think she was prettier in the cartoon, as weird as that sounds. Um, so yeah, this is a noble effort, but I definitely don't think it's the strongest in the line. So yeah, so there you go. So that's April O'Neil. So next we'll take a look at the foot soldier that came packaged with April. So this, I believe they called it the bashed uh, foot soldier. So as we pointed out in the packaging, he's bashed because he's got this kind of hole punched through the middle of him here. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much what we've seen in past foot soldier figures. So like, for example, here's the foot soldier that came in wave one packaged with one of the other Ninja Turtles. So you see here, this is essentially the same figure. Uh, it's just he's got a different torso section to accommodate that battle damage. Um, these guys all come with a bunch of accessories, including a bunch of guns. They came with the same guns. So like this figure from wave one, I have him displayed with this big rifle. This one here from wave two, I have him displayed with this kind of, I don't know, more ray gun type thing. But uh, you can see that he came with the same rifle. That I've got this guy packaged with. So all the foot soldiers seem to come with the same stuff. He's got a whole bunch of alternate hands. He's got a little uh, communicator, I believe, came with him. I've got some some throwing stars here. You can't really see, but yeah, I don't know, can you? Some throwing stars. Um, what else? Other odds and ends. If you're a hardcore turtle fan and you might know some of the specific episodes, some of this stuff is from then uh, yeah you might be stoked but for me i appreciate them throwing all these little knickknacks in there but they don't really uh add much value for me um you know extra guns extra hands that's cool but uh you know some of the other little knickknacks uh not as much so the foot soldier um he works you know similar to how the previous ones worked he's got the double jointed legs so he's got a good amount of movement there um you know there's a lot of articulation on these figures like I said, I wish they just didn't feel quite so delicate. Now, mind you, the foot soldier doesn't feel as bad as I find some of the larger figures. Bebop and Rocksteady were the worst for really feeling delicate and really having tight joints that I didn't want to force to move. The foot soldier's not too bad. So, uh, yeah, there's, I don't have a whole lot more to say about this figure because I've talked about these guys already in past videos. It looks cool. Um, I think it's good enough that it... You know, I don't really feel the need to get the uh, the Super 7 version, even though I've been hearing really good things about that Super 7 version. I think these guys are adequate enough for me. Um, and even though I don't love the fact that I feel forced to buy a bunch of these guys, you know, having two of them in Wave 1, that's fair enough. But now that I've got four of them, uh, I don't know if they're going to keep doing this to me as I continue to buy figures. Every figure I buy, I have to get another foot soldier to go with it. Um, which, you know, it might look cool on the shelf, but uh, it definitely kind of hurts the wallet, so... Anyway, there you go. So that's the bashed foot soldier. So while we're talking foot soldiers, let's just move right on to the slashed foot soldier. So this is the one that comes with Casey Jones. And you'll see I've got him holding another kind of weird futuristic weapon. Now this one here actually didn't come with him. This came in the two pack with Slash and Leatherhead, but I knew I wasn't gonna have either of those two characters holding this gun. And I thought I might as well change it up since all the foot soldiers so far have come with like the same guns. I thought it was a nice way to change up my display by adding, you know, kind of one of the weirder guns with this guy. And it looks pretty good. 
But otherwise, accessory-wise, he comes with all the same stuff. He's got throwing stars. He's got two, like, sci-fi-looking kind of cannons uh, and a bunch of alternate hands. So, same thing we've seen on the Bashed Foot Soldier and the Standard Foot Soldiers. He looks the same. You know, the head sculpt appears to be the exact same on all these guys. Um, so, yeah, nice figure, but literally we just talked about him, so I don't have a whole lot to say. But what makes this guy different is he has a, a different torso than the other guys. And it's quite interesting uh, because the other guy where they just kind of sculpted some battle damage in his chest, you know, that's that's pretty common. You see that a lot with toys, a battle damaged version. But this guy here, they call him Slashed. And you can see he is, oh, look, his, his foot just came off in my hand here. I don't think it broke, just, just came off. Anyway, um, he's Slashed right through. Like, you can see right through this guy. He uh, is just a one little wire holding this guy together. So that's a pretty strong little wire that they've got there. And it's got some bend to it. I don't want to mess with it too much because I'm scared it could break. But yeah, it's it's pretty crazy that they're just holding this guy together with just that one little piece of, uh, is, of wire. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, and it definitely kind of, it, it, looks, it looks neat. Uh, it's not something I've seen in another action figure before. But... Uh, I don't really think this was something I needed. I would have much rather just buy Casey Jones for 30 bucks rather than buy this two pack for 60 bucks and have to get another foot soldier. But it is cool. And I appreciate NECA at least rather than give me the exact same figure over and over again with maybe a different gun by adding some of these battle damages and stuff. It, uh, you know, it shows they put a little bit of effort in so I don't feel like I'm buying the same toy over and over and over again. So now let's talk about Casey Jones. So this is a cool figure. Um, he looks great and he looks like he leapt right off of the comic book page or an animation cell. Um, it's really the way they've kind of outlined his, everything in black. Um, you'll see it's particularly on like his weapons, like the hockey stick has got this kind of, it's solid white, but I don't know if you can see it's got a black framing all around it. And, uh, that really gives it a look like it's hand drawn. So yeah, I've got him displayed here with his baseball bat in hand, but he also comes with a, I guess it would just be a goalie stick from hockey as well as a regular hockey stick. And he's got like a sledgehammer, which just seems kind of, you know, outside of his theme. And then this here, I don't know. It looks like maybe it's just a, uh, a pipe of some sort. I don't know if it's a bat for a different type of sport. I'm not exactly a sports guy, as you can probably tell by my action figure YouTube channel. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. He's also got this kind of soft uh, golf bag, which I did. I kind of had to wrestle to get it over his shoulder and arm. Because if I put it over one arm, I find it was just falling off all over the place. So now that I did get it over his head and shoulder, it stays nice and firm in place. So I can leave all those extra accessories I'm not using in the bag. So, yeah, he's got a golf bag, but no golf club, which seems a little strange. I'm pretty sure the vintage figure had a golf club speaking of the vintage figure that's one of the childhood figures that i uh i had and here he is so you can see you know the similarities they both have the kind of jogging pants with the drawstring they both have the torn uh tank top uh the hockey mask like this was a cool looking figure but this guy definitely uh outshines him he's just uh you know he's a taller all the old digital figures were always kind of squatty looking so now that he's standing tall, he looks a lot more intense. And just, uh, yeah, the overall size just makes for a better figure, I think. I really like the details and the mask on this guy here. The only thing that could have maybe made this figure a little better is if maybe the mask was removable. That would have been pretty cool. But otherwise, yeah, he looks pretty great. And he's got the similar articulation as the other figures in the line. You can see he's got the double joints on the knees, double joints on the elbows. Um, and I did um, take the hair dryer to Casey as well as these other figures here to get them to loosen up a little bit uh, it's probably not a bad idea for you to do some people use like soak them in warm water but whatever you got to do to kind of loosen up those joints because once you get them moving the first time or two then uh, then it's not so bad but uh, yeah like I said with all these figures they feel a little brittle and a little uh, there's a lot of resistance when you first open them up and they don't want to move very much but uh, yeah after a little bit of fudging around with the uh, the hair dryer he moves pretty well and yeah, so he's a really cool figure. I like this guy a lot. So now let's take a look at Slash. So 
Slash, he's a nice figure. He's got lots of detail. Uh, you know, he's got that kind of, I don't know if it's a cybernetic eye implant or just some sort of goggles. Uh, he's got this funky backpack over his shoulder, which I don't remember what the purpose of it was for. Um, he's got a couple of swords. Um, you know, a lot of nice detail there. Now, with this guy, this is not a look I necessarily love. Like, he looks, I think, kind of stupid with these kind of like, I want to say, like kind of buck teeth. You know, they're not exactly fangs. They're just a couple of big square teeth sticking out the side of his mouth. Like, he looks kind of oafish. And I don't love it. Um, and uh, to the contrary, I love this Turtles in Time version of Slash. He looks, you know, nuts with that crazy smile, with the fangs, um, just the expression of his eyes, the design of his costume with these kind of like Wolverine claws on his uh, gloves and everything. Really cool. Love this figure. And this guy here, he's just, he looks like a goofier child, you know, cartoon version of this, which, you know, it's great that it's based on how he looked in the cartoon. But for my shelf, I was totally content with this slash. I didn't really feel I needed this one, and I would not have bought this if it was packaged on its own. And to be perfectly honest, the the um, Leatherhead figure that he came with, um, he's also available as a single carded figure, but in the Turtles in Time deco. So he's got he's more brighter colors. And he's got that little square eight bit patches on him. And when I pre ordered uh, Leatherhead. Um, even though I think I do prefer the cartoon version of Leatherhead, I said, you know what, I'm going to pre-order the Turtles in Time version of him, even though it's not as good, but that way I don't have to waste an extra 30 bucks getting this figure that I don't really want. But when uh, EB Games called me to tell me that my order had come in, they said, yeah, your Turtle figures are here. They actually had pre-ordered me the two-pack. So I was like, I could have told them, you know what, I don't want this, maybe order me the other Leatherhead but, uh, you know, I've been waiting long enough for these figures anyway, and I thought, oh, well, what the hell? It doesn't hurt to add another turtle figure to my shelf. Like, it's not a bad figure by any means. It's just uh, when I'm trying to, you know, watch the, the spending a little bit, I really didn't want... I didn't feel this guy was essential, but if you prefer the cartoon look, I think it's a great, great-looking figure. And he's got a lot of, a lot of accessories. So besides the, uh, the swords, he's got, like, a slice of pizza he's got i think this is supposed to be a little version of himself um pre mutated this little turtle guy here um also i don't really remember the episode i'd be lying but i think in his little uh like kind of goldfish bowl he was in he had this little palm tree that he was attached to so you get that little accessory there so lots of neat little stuff so overall not bad i like the design of him but i do prefer the other version of slash so now let's take a look at the figure that I think is the real highlight of the wave, and that is Leatherhead. So this is the like Cajun alligator guy. <laughs> uh, I always really liked the look of this dude, and yeah, this is a big figure. Like he's uh, he'll fit in nicely with my Bebop and Rocksteady, as they were both pretty big, bulky figures as well. Um, the tail was an accessory; you had to snap that onto him. And that's something I really needed the hairdryer for because I was really scared I was going to break the tail by trying to force it onto the little knob there. So yeah, the hairdryer really helped with that. Um, he got a bunch of stuff. Uh, you'll see I've got this chain wrapped around his neck. It's got like a little handcuff for when he snares somebody. And I don't know quite what the intent of this is, how this, what you're supposed to do with the other end of this chain. Um, but I've just got it around his wrist and I just kind of threw it over his shoulder. He's got this kind of like bear trap which can attach to his belt. And uh, like you can see, it opens up. So you can set that and it'll snap shut. Um, he's got this shotgun, double barrel shotgun. So that's kind of a cool weapon. Um, he also had, what did he have? I've got all the accessories just kind of laying here in a pile and it's hard to remember who came with what. But probably the other, the main thing he came with was this big net which I haven't opened up yet, but you can see it's got this rope and this net. I'm actually not sure how big it is once you fold it out, but uh, it's 
pretty cool. Like, I don't think I'm going to really bother to open it because I don't know how it would work in my display. But if you were actually playing with these things, that might be kind of cool. Maybe you could, you know, hang the net and have the rope go over a tree branch or something that he could pull and snare somebody. Uh, it's pretty neat. Um, he also has these, uh, comes with a couple of lobsters or crawfish. I can't remember. I think in the vintage figure they snapped onto the belt somehow, but I don't really see how that works here. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these things. Uh, and he also had a couple alternate hands. So you can change up uh, if you want closed fists or you want the open hand so he can hold his various weapons. So overall, I think this is a really cool looking figure. Um, I didn't have the vintage toy of Leatherhead actually. And even if I did, this one would clearly be far superior because like all the old Ninja Turtles um, figures, everybody was kind of squatty. And I remember this guy, he almost looked like he was down on all fours because he was kind of sat so low. Um, I do have this 2012 Leatherhead figure which I really like the look of. I like the look on his face and everything. He looks pretty mean and scary. But this character was supposed to be really big and tower over the turtles, which would make sense given how big an alligator is compared to a turtle. But you can see, if anything, he actually ends up being smaller than the turtles. So that's kind of a bummer. I feel he's a character that's been consistently ripped off as far as the scale of him goes. He should be a big, mean character, and he's always getting the short end of the stick. But... That was until now. Finally, we've got a big leatherhead here who, when you bring in one of those, uh, the turtles from this line, oops, you'll see how much bigger leatherhead is. You know, he really does look intimidating compared to the Ninja Turtle. So yeah, this is a great figure. I'm really excited about him and adding him onto my shelf. Um, one gripe I maybe have about the design and one thing I preferred about the Turtles in Time version. And I don't know, I assume this is cartoon accurate, but I don't remember. Is it looks like his pants just bleed right into his boots. Like it's almost as if he's got like a Spider-Man kind of spandex pants on, which I don't love. Um, whereas the uh, the video game version had separate boots from his pants, which just looked a little cooler and made a little bit more sense. Also, this uh, in his crotch area is kind of strange looking too, because he's got the stripes across his chest, which I understand that's what a, an alligator's belly looks like. But then he's got this kind of cod piece over his tights, uh, which carries on that pattern. I don't know if that's supposed to be armor or if it's supposed to be, you know, bare skin and the, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, so it's a little, it's a little weird of a design choice, but overall I think this figure is great. I love his little hat. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention his mouth opens up. Not a ton, probably a little bit more than if, if I wanted to heat it up. But uh, the fact that his mouth opens and closes it all is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot. Really cool figure. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the figure that I literally just opened up 10 seconds ago. So this is Baxter Stockman from Super 7's Ultimates Ninja Turtle line. So first impressions, is this guy is uh, he's pretty cool like he's uh, he's pretty big we'll bring him out here just to compare to um, one of NECA's figures here so yeah size wise you can see Baxter stands quite a bit taller than the other figures and maybe I'll even grab uh, Leatherhead here who we established as one of the larger figures from NECA's line um, yeah, these guys look to be about the same same size, good scale. I still think uh, Baxter's a little bit bigger, but, um, you know, it seems a little out of place because this guy is an alligator, this guy is a fly. But um, where the old, the old Playmates figures were all kind of very squatty, um, this guy here, right now he's standing, standing tall. This is how he came in the box. But I think you actually probably would display him more with his legs a little squatty. Um, I think that would be his natural stance. So by doing that, you would uh, diminish his height somewhat. So uh, there you go. Yeah, that would shorten him up a little bit. So yeah, the articulation, he seems to move well. I don't feel I need to go get the hair dryer for him. And everything seems relatively tight. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so 
You can hear a nice kind of ratchety joint. Like it, there's some resistance when you move it, which is good. Um, but yeah, so the sculpting on this guy. Yeah, he's like a, he's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I like the face on him. It's very true to the uh, the original toy. Kind of a goofy, almost of a smile design. Um, I like the the feel of the hair. The little I guess he got little horns on his head there above his eyes. Uh, it, it looks really cool. Um, his jacket, his kind of a scientist jacket here. There's not a whole lot of detail in there, but there's a little sculpted, uh, looks like a hypodermic needle in his pocket there. Uh, on the hands. So uh, on one hand, he's actually got a wedding ring on this finger here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's, that's true to the vintage figure, except it wasn't painted before, so it wasn't as easily noticeable. Um, but yeah, it's painted silver here, so it really stands out his finger, which is uh, it's kind of a neat little detail and a little disturbing too, because I don't think they ever addressed that uh, Baxter, who was a human scientist and then mutated into a fly, uh, I don't think they ever addressed the fact that he left a wife at home. Like, does he go home to her looking like this? I don't know. But uh, yeah, so then the secondary arms, so they are articulated at the hands, at the elbows, and there's a joint on the back here, so they can you can move these out and forward, swing them up. So there's a, there's a good amount of movement on the arms, uh, the head side to side, and uh, not much in the way of forward and back. It doesn't seem like the wings. Move the arms out of the way here. The wings, some movement there. Now I will uh, point out. I think. The way the old figure, the way the wings kind of sat, they sat frontward facing like that, except over to the side. The way the joint works on these ones, you can't seem to put them over to the side like this and still face forward. So you can't see the broad side of the wing. So maybe that's a little disappointing, but not a big deal. I think they look fine, however, however you want to put them out there. But they've got some nice patterns on there too. You see that like kind of darker blue throughout uh, his back. Kind of some gross sculpted detail there on the back. You can see where his kind of like hump is busting through his jacket, where those extra arms and the wings protrude out of, and it's the texture of the skin is all kind of gross and bumpy. Same as on his chest. That looks pretty gross. Um, I don't know if you can see, he's got some kind of like varicose veins that are running on his chest underneath his bow tie. But yeah, really cool. I like the look of this figure, and I'll have to test out the. Uh, the glow in the dark. I haven't really been able to do that because I've had him in the box for the past couple of weeks. But uh, now that I've got him out, I'll have to just hold him under some light there for a little while, and then we'll uh, we'll get a shot of him to see how well the the glow in the dark function works. Now for accessories, um, he's got quite a few, and he should. That's kind of how Super Seven justifies the price point of these things by saying they're the ultimate figure because they have every accessory you could ever dream of. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but whatever. All right. Seems to stand okay. Took a little took a little bit of wrestling around with him, but he stands okay. So for accessories. So the old Ninja Turtle figures always came with unpainted accessories, and they came in this little accessory tree like this, and you had to punch them out yourself. You'd snap these little pieces of plastic, and then you would have this gun, you would have this fly swatter. And there he goes. Um, so anyway, it's cool though kind of redundant i think that they did this maybe some collectors really love this but you see every every accessory they've given you here they they gave you a painted version anyway um and if this wasn't the glow in the dark version i'm sure these guns would be painted in even more detail but so you've got that same gun with a little like satellite dish looking thing on the back and we've got it right here with the paint detail so and same as with this uh fly swatter gun so this whole fly swatter thing here We've got it here. Uh, it's got the painted red handle. The little turtle that's swatted on the back is painted. Um, so yeah, I don't know why you really need these. If Super 7 is justifying these as bumping up the price, I would gladly say knock five bucks off of it and I don't need the tree of weapons that you've already included. I can't imagine too many people are actually popping up the weapons from the tree and using those in place of the painted weapons, but I don't know, maybe. Um, so as far as these go, I saw in another video, so he can hold, hold the pistol in his hand, 
the fly swatter thing, I guess he holds it here by the red handle. And then in the vintage figure, it also had this attachment where you could slide it over his wrist. But uh, apparently this figure's wrists are too thick that that won't work. But you can slide it onto the gun, supposedly. So I don't know, you can merge these into one super accessory with a gun and a fly swatter, I suppose, if you really want to. He's got a bunch of extra hands to make sure that he can hold all of his accessories. So he's got kind of like full um, gripping hands here. He's got kind of a closed fist there. So six alternate hands in all plus the two that he's, he's already got. So there's eight hands to choose from. So that's pretty cool. But then the best accessory that he comes with is a mouser. So if you remember these things from the cartoon, these were used frequently these little mechanical mice that would hunt out the Ninja Turtles in their sewer. Um, and so, yeah, the regular Baxter Stockman figure comes with one of these, and it's more classic kind of white or silver look. But this one here is completely glow-in-the-dark, so it matches up with the Baxter and all the accessories. And, yeah, his uh, mouth opens up here, I believe. Or maybe. It seems like it should, but I'm having a little trouble... You know, I'm not sure that it does, to be honest with you, because even though it's uh, it's got a seam there for the mouth, but I don't see any joint where it would uh, where it would move. So I might have to get back to you on that. But uh, for now, like he looks really cool, like nice sculpted detail on this guy. He's articulated at the legs, so you can move those around. But yeah, this is a really neat thing. Although I'm going to be annoyed if his mouth doesn't open, because that seems like an obvious thing that should happen but uh yeah there we go so that is baxter stockman the uh san diego exclusive from super seven and with that um that covers all my new ninja turtle figures and i think this video has probably gone on longer than i intended but uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit the like button maybe subscribe to the channel because i've got new videos coming soon as you saw, I've got a whole wave of Spider-Man figures that I hope to tackle next because I really want to open them up. Um, and then I have some other miscellaneous figures that have been piling up here for like the last two months that I uh, have yet to show you. So that stuff will all be coming soon. And then that will bring me that much closer to my 100th episode, which I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for my 100th episode. If you've got any suggestions, please uh, feel free to leave those in the comments too because I want to do something a little different. But right now I haven't really been, been able to come up with anything. So... Anyway, thank you very much for watching, as always, and I will see you next time. Ciao.